Welcome to Excel Name Trick number nine. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link and download the workbook Excel Name Series 1 to 12. Hey, Name Trick number nine. We're going to learn how to create formulas as names. Now, we'll do a, a randomizing formula first, and then I'll show you a very well-known named formula using the offset function. Now, what I want to do is be able to create a name so I can type that name into the cell and automatically randomly generate numbers between two values. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Control F3 to get up to the name manager. In 2007 you have to click New here. In 2003 it would say Define Names here right when you hit Control F3 and you type in your name and then put your formula down here. Now in 2007 you actually have the option of Scope. Scope means if you have workbook, it means this formula will work everywhere. If you select one of these, it'll work just in that sheet. That's a pretty cool addition in 2007. Now, we want to randomly um, uh, create numbers between 50,000 and 100,000 with some pennies. Now, notice there's an underscore there. What it did is it took, uh, we were, our cell right here was highlighted, so it took that name. We'll select that name. That's fine. Let's click down here. And actually, in 2007, there's that you can drag. So you have enough room to create your formula. Now, we're going to use, I'm going to show you two different formulas, one for two th that'll work in 2007. Or if you have analysis tool pack in earlier versions, then I'll show you one that will work in all versions. Equals rand between, and this is where you have to know how to spell. I hope I spelled it right. I'm always messing up this. And ran between, this is in uh, by default in 2007. In earlier versions, you have to go to Tools, Add-ins, and then add the Analysis tool back. I want to say 50,000, comma, and then 100,000, close parentheses. That will randomly generate whole numbers between 50K and 100,000. Now I'm going to say plus, round, and R-A-N-D, open parentheses, close parentheses. That's the rand function. Without an argument there, that cr randomly ge generates numbers between 0 and 1. Now, I don't want to, it goes out to 15 digits, and I don't want all 15 digits. So that's why I put the round and then the rand. So I'm going to do comma 2, close parentheses. That means it'll take whatever 15 um, digit number between 0 and 1 and round it to the, the penny, in essence. And if I get a number with like 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 4, 5, 8, 3, 2, 1, then it will obviously be 0 pennies, which is OK for us. So that formula right there will work. I'm going to click OK and then uh, click Close. Let's try it. I'm going to hit F3. And then uh, to get down to the R's, I'm going to hit R. And there it is. I'm going to double click. See, it puts a equal sign and then the name. And then I could double click and send it down. Double click. Hey, how come it, do it doesn't? Oh, because there's nothing to the left, to the right, or underneath. So I'm going to have to click and drag. Now I can hit my F9 key. Boop, 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 boop. Now let me show you a uh, formula that will work in earlier versions, regardless if you have ran between Control F3, New, and I'm going to say Rand Doll Figures. Huh? It's like short, random dollar figures. All right, you ready? Equals 50,000 plus round, open parentheses, rand, open parentheses, close parentheses, times 50K, comma, two, close parentheses. Now, the way this one works is since we have a rand, remember that generates a number between 0 and 1. But if we get a number that's close to 0 times this, it'll be 0. If this is 0.5, if this RAN generates a 0.5, then 0.5 times 50K is 25,000. If the number is near 1 or almost 1, 9999999, then it gets a number near um, 50,000. So approximately 1 times 50,000 is 50,000. And uh, we want to include some of those extra pennies here. So uh, we're rounding to the second position, which means the penny. Oh, that's how you have to get a lower end number in earlier version. You just put the 50,000 there. Click OK. Click Close. And now let's try this uh, right here. F3 for paste name R to jump down to that part. And I'm going to double click. 
and then enter. No way. That's amazing. Now let's look at the offset function in name. Now here's the common uh, situation. You have a list that's going to expand or contract, and you want to put data validation. If we did data validation right now, it would just have these values. But when I added a value here, it, may, it wouldn't update. So we're going to name a formula with using the offset function that will create a dynamic range. Control F3 new, and I'm going to call this department. I'm such a bad typer. I have to be very, 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 very careful. All right, now I'm going to come down here. We're going to use the offset function. Equals offset, open parentheses. Now, the offset function has one, two, three, four, five, five arguments. The first one is, hey, where do you want your dynamic range to start? Right there. Comma. The next argument is how far up or down do you want to move from the starting point? Hey, we don't want to move, so I'm going to put a 0. Comma, the next one is how far left or right from the starting point do you want to move? I don't want to move at all left or right, so I'm going to say 0. Comma, the, one, two, three, the fourth argument is how tall. How tall is your range? So I'm going to use counter because I'm counting words, not numbers. And then highlight this whole range. Now, there's a bunch of cool tricks. Uh, you could uh, scroll down as far. You could actually highlight the whole column if you didn't have a field name. If you did, you'd have to subtract one and count if you didn't know how big it was going to be. If your list you know, may get up to 100, then maybe you'd highlight 200 cells. I'm just going to highlight these here to show you. And then close parentheses. That's how tall it is. And then comma, how, wi um, how wide is it? One column. Close parentheses. There you go. That's an amazing formula. For departments. I'm going to click OK, and you can see it down here. Now, here's a cool way to check it in earlier versions, and this version allows you to do this. If you click on this, boop, oh, look at that. It like has the dancing ants around the range that it thinks it's supposed to be looking at. I'm going to click Unclaps and then Close. Now, I'm going to try this. I'm going to use Data Validation, Alt DL, Alt DL, and then I'm going to go Tab to get to this, and then L to jump to the list part. And then here I'm going to say F3 to get my name. And I have to hit D to get down to the Ds, which is department. I'm going to double click departments. Click OK. Now I have a drop down. Oh, that is so cool. Now watch this. I'm going to type uh, human resources. Let's see if it works. I'm going to click here. <gasps> that is so cool. It just added to the bottom of the list. Let's try it again. Uh, uh, now let's see if we add it to the bottom. Oh, look at that. Let's check it one other way. Control F3. Uh, we want to find our departments. And then let's do our trick again. Let's click this. Oh, that is so cool. The dancing ants are jumping around the right cells. So this expands and contracts depending on what you put there. I'm going to click that and then close. I'm going to delete this one right here just to see. Did it go away when we did that? Uh-oh, look at that. That's a data validation error, but that's OK. We're going to say accounting. Let's go look Control F3 and see if we select departments. Let's see if it, oh, it contracted. That is so amazing. That's how to do dynamic range. But we're using a name and uh, the offset function. By the way, you can do any formula you want here, because this is just a formula. We've been only using it so far before this video to use ranges, but you can do any formula there. I'm going to say new. I've got to show you one last cool thing. I'm going to type the tax rate uh, here. And then down here, I'm going to very carefully highlight it and hit delete. And then equals 0 0.0925. Oh, we can store constants. Click OK. Click close. Now we can do a tax here. Equals this sale times. And then I'm going to hit my F3. Oops, escape. I am such a bad typer. There it is. That means times. Asterisk is times. Then I'm going to hit F3. And I'm going to click somewhere in the list and then hit T's to get down to the T's. And then double click. That's how to put a name in, in the middle of formula. Enter. And it has the tax rate there. By the way, here's an obscure trick. If you highlight this, if you don't believe it, well, another way to check it. Highlight just the element of the formula you want to evaluate. And then hit the F9 key. Oh, it shows you. Quickly hit Escape. And then it puts the name back in there. All right, that's about named formulas. Amazing how we can do so many things with formulas. See you next name trick.